Hey, Mr. Hey, Mr. I'm here in Oldenburg with Linus De Poli, the director of Dr. Ketel. Where did you get the inspiration for this film? Um, it's inspired by uh, well, two events. Um, the uh, father of Anna, the producer, used to be a doctor in Neukölln, so in the uh, problematic district of Berlin, uh, for 30 years. So he would tell us a lot of stories about it. Um, it, it, it was a real half tough time in the 80s and the 90s. Like people would come to his practice, they didn't have insurance, they didn't have an appointment, but you know he'd still love to help them. So he knew a lot about life on the streets uh, in, in Neukölln. And uh, that inspired us, for uh, the first thing that inspired us. And the second thing was uh, Ketel himself, the actor, Ketel Weber. Because Ketel Weber's biography is a bit similar to the one of the character. So we created the character out of Ketel and we created a lot of the story out of Anna's father's stories. So uh, what do you mean by um, Dr. Ketel's biography is a bit the same? As um, well, how is it? Ketel, um, Ketel has failed many times in his life and um, he has not started with his acting career young on. He uh, actually only became an actor about 10 years ago uh, where he was already uh, over 30 years old. And um, before that he tried many, many different things and he always failed. And um, he also has a big problem with his health and he always thought um, that he has not found his uh, real, what's it called, uh, his real uh, profession, yes, his real profession. So um, I think his personal struggle with his way, what his way is, is a big part of the character in the movie. How did you work as, an as a director? How did you direct? Uh, I, we tried different things. Um, I, on this project I wanted to try um, improvisation as well as uh, strict script work. So part of the, of the scenes were not scripted at all, others were very, very precisely scripted. Um, that is because it is my final project from film school and there were so many things that I never really tried during film school and I didn't have a seminar for, so I said, well, let's just put any idea that we always wanted to try in that film, in that script, and let's give it a shot. So that's basically how we worked. And uh, which scene is, for example, improvised? Uh, many, many scenes from the first half. So. Um, a lot of scenes with um, Ketel and his girlfriend are improvised. It's like we improvised uh, on the set and then we said, okay, this is good, let's agree on that, and then we kept it that way. But we made the scene uh, become what it is on set. And how did you work with the actors? How did you prepare them for the role? Um, very, very differently because um, some of them you know, are just street casting and some are professional actors with agencies. So with the more professional ones, I could try a lot of stuff on a technical level. With the people that we just casted from the streets, we basically told them, you are what you are. Um, so we did not try to get into a character. We, we did not build a character around them. We, we casted them as whatever they were. So we casted a gardener, we casted uh, well, sick people from the, from, from the street, and um, and even with most characters that are played by by, by actors that we knew in before the film, they basically play themselves or a, a caricature of, of themselves. Okay, and uh, why is the film in black white? Uh, yes, um, we sh we shot it uh, in black and white because I think it helps a lot to create um, the setting, the setting which is uh, like a little. Uh, dystopia, post-apocalyptia setting. It's not an apocalypse that happened, but um, a reform that destroyed everything. It destroyed a lot of the healthcare system and people are sick. So this black and white helps to make the city look a little a little sick, a little run down. And um, then the film for me is in a way, it's also in the, in the tradition of a detective film or a film noir. And so the shadows are, for me are more important than the colors. And um, well, the best way to see a shadow is if you shoot in black and white <laughs> for me. The film plays in Berlin in the yes. near future. Mm -hmm. When could that be? Today. Um, it's actually, uh, it, we always say it is the near future. It also says so at the beginning of the movie. But for me, it is more a, a parallel, grotesque presence. So it does not name a specific year because it, I think it could basically be today with one more step. You know, if, if something happens today, this could be tomorrow. That was the intention. Dr. Ketel has shown very white. Like um, all this, he only has good qualities. He only has good features. Why did the you person. decide to yeah. to show him like this? Um, well, the thing is, um, I think it is. He's he's a regular guy, but 
his profession is to help. And when your profession is to help, you follow that. Even if you follow that on an egoistic point of view, you still help, you still do good. So um, he does not really question if he does bad or good, because when he does bad things, because he has to break into pharmacies to get his equipment and stuff, he, um, he's also a, an, um, a criminal. Uh, and he does not really question that as well. He questions it as part of questioning his whole um, profession, but he does not question it as a crime or something. So whatever he does, he considers necessary, not necessarily good or bad, that's, that's what I mean. So I did not want him to be uh, an angel. He even says that in the, in the film, what do you think I am, a saint? So he does not consider himself a saint, um, although he may appear like one. From, for me, he is a, re yeah, he is a hero in a way, he's a hero figure, not, but not an angel. <laughs> Professional. He's broken into pharmacies before. Do you want to take over the investigation? Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. How much time did you take for the shooting, mm. for writing the script? Well, we had the, uh, we were in the luxurious situation of um, being part of a film school at the time, so uh, we could take a lot of time. There were no deadlines. Still, we wanted to shoot fast, um, so we collected the scenes that we wanted, and it took about uh, half a year from the, the idea to the first day of shooting, which is rather fast. And um, then we shot for 68 days, so quite a long time for a student film. When you when you say like most uh, 80, 90 minute feature films have like 20 days, 30 days maybe, so we had uh, we had a lot of time for shooting because we knew. If you don't have money and you want something good, you might need a little more time. You cannot go like this, 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 this. Um, so that was, we, we took at least that uh, advantage, you know, that we say, okay, we have a small team, we don't have anything at all, let's take all the time we need to finish that. And then one year of post-production, basically. So, two years in total, I'd say. Okay, great. Okay, thank you for the interview. If you want to see the trailer, just click here. And your website, you just have to click here. Right? And there you find more information about the film Dr. Kittle. Hey, mister. Hey.